Now by the end of this video, you'll be able to answer all of these questions without picking up a calculator. Sine pi on six, that's sine 30 degrees. In the past, you would have had to pick up a calculator for that. Not anymore. Standard triangles is how we're gonna do it. So our first standard triangle looks like this. We're gonna draw a right angle triangle with lengths one and one there. That makes it an isosceles triangle. So that's a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna draw in this bit here. Now think about it, it's an isosceles triangle, this line and this line are the same, which means that this angle and this angle are the same. Now if that's 90 degrees and the internal angles of a triangle add up to 180, then these must add up to 90. 90 plus 90 will make 180. So if they add up to 90 degrees, then this must be 45 degrees. But we're in big school now, so we don't talk in degrees, we talk in radians. So this is pi on 4 radians. This is our standard triangle, but it's missing one important bit, the hypotenuse. How long is the hypotenuse? Well, using Pythagoras' theorem, we can say that the hypotenuse here, let's call it x squared, is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So x squared is equal to 2, which means that x is equal to the square root of 2. That is our first standard triangle, there are two of them. Uh, now, using that standard triangle, we can do something pretty awesome. We can answer this question, this question, and this question. Now, remember that part sine of anything is opposite over hypotenuse. So, let's use the angle here, pi on 4, opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. That's 1 over root 2. Alright, let's keep using this angle here. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 1 over root 2. And finally, tan pi on 4 is equal to opposite over adjacent. 1 over 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Now, not to get too pedantic here, but a lot of people don't like writing 1 on root 2. They think it's a bit rude to put a square root on the bottom. So, take my word for it here. 1 on root 2 is equal to root 2 on 2. You'll see it written both ways, depending on how pedantic the people are that write your textbooks. Um, 1 on root 2 is equal to root 2 on 2. So, that is our first standard triangle, and that is how you find sine pi on 4, cos pi on 4 and tan pi on 4. You'll just be able to do them like that now. Here's our second standard triangle. We're going to do a bit of work to get to our standard triangle. We're going to start with an equilateral triangle. Uh, and all of the lengths of our equilateral triangle are 2. And then I'm going to cut the equilateral triangle in half. That gives me a right angle there, and that means that this length is 1. And now I'm going to get rid of half of that equilateral triangle. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, now, if this is an equilateral triangle, or if it started life as an equilateral triangle, then this angle must be 60 degrees. But in big school, it's pi on 3. Then, this started life as an equilateral triangle, and this was 60 degrees, so half of that is 30 degrees, which is pi on 6. Okay. Finally, what is that? Well, we can do the same sort of thing here because we've got a right angle triangle, it's Pythagoras' theorem, but this time we need to say that 2 squared is equal to 1 squared plus, sorry, yes, plus x squared, where this is x. Alright, that means that 4 is equal to 1 plus x squared, which means that 4 minus 1 is equal to x squared, 3 is x squared, so x is root 3. And now, 
we have our second standard triangle, something you should just be able to draw from memory. Okay, one, two, root three, root uh, pi on three, and pi on six. And now we can find all of this other stuff. So let's use um, our angle here, pi on six, to find sine, cos, and tan, pi on six. So sine pi on six is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Um, let's use our blue pen. Opposite over hypotenuse. Cos pi on 6 is equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Root 3 on 2. Tan pi on 6. Now I need to be careful here because I've made this mistake before. Pi on 6. Opposite over adjacent. 1 on root 3. Okay. I'm looking pretty good at the moment. Uh, now I need to do sine pi on 3, cos pi on 3, and tan pi on 3. So, uh, sine pi on 3, here's pi on 3, opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 on 2. Now you should note, sine pi on 3 and cos pi on 6 are the same. That's interesting. Okay, uh, sine pi on 3, cos pi on 3. Cos pi on 3 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, 1.5. Well, sorry, one half. Now, note, sine pi on six and cos pi on three. Same, that's interesting. Okay, finally, tan pi on six. Uh, sorry, pi on six, that should be pi on three. Oh no, I hope you picked that up at the beginning. All right, tan pi on three, what's that gonna be equal to? Opposite over adjacent. Root 3 on 1. Now, root 3 on 1 is just root 3. But interesting to note, this was 1 on root 3, and this was the opposite of that, root 3 on 1. Just important to make these little connections so you can remember all of this and see all of this in your head. Now, what do you need to take away from this video? You need to be able to draw this standard triangle. You need to be able to draw this standard triangle. And then you need to be able to use those standard triangles to calculate all of these trig ratios. Now, it might also be useful to you to have these trig ratios just sitting there in your head, ready to go. You don't have to draw the standard triangle to make them happen. So, you might want to draw up a table that looks something like this. Ta-da! All right, so something you might want to note here, a couple of things to remember about this table. So sine pi on 6 is 1 half, sine pi on 4 is root 2 on 2. I use the polite version of that. All right, so a couple of things. Notice this is the same as this, this is the same as this, and this is the same as this. So if you can sort of remember the first line, the next line is just the second line in reverse. Um, they've all got twos on the bottoms. Two, 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 two. I'm just looking at sine and cos at the moment. Um, look at this. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So you can write this by writing 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. If you want, put some square roots where you need them. Finally, 10. There's a big 1 in the middle here. And there's root 3 on this side and 1 on root 3 on that side. So there's sort of some symmetry going on, sort of flipped and turned around. However you decide to do this, you need to be able to write these standard triangles. You need to be able to use these standard triangles to make these numbers appear. But we're going to do so many calculations that it's good if you can sort of memorize some of these numbers in a, in a, in a fast, fast way, fast way to find them. That, those are your standard triangles.